Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Virginie Capras, and I'm really delighted to be here today and to talk about our expertise in drug delivery and formulation. We are silicone manufacturer and one of the main supplier of silicone material. Uh, we have ingredient, excipient, and IPI serving the entire spectrum of the pharmaceutical industry, going from the consumer healthcare to the registered Erix market. We, one of the main hurdles facing the pharmaceutical industry today is the lack of innovation and differentiation for the excipient. Silicone-based material, silicone excipient, provide a broad range of technology with specific functionalities and benefits, allowing innovation to the formulation. Silicone-based formulation combine uh, enhanced drug delivery with specific skin benefits, such aesthetic, substantivity, which provide a better patient compliance. We offer multiple silicone technology, and those technologies are really dedicated to meet the expectation and the needs of the formulator. In the topical field, our recent development are really concentrated in different areas, such as understand the, the topical market and the trend, development of innovative silicone material, development of formulation, which are combining a good drug delivery combined with specific sensory profile, and also, we provide some formulation assistance, allowing to the formulator to play on the drug delivery and also to stabilize some sensitive, some, some sensitive drug in the formulation. And this will be presented later. Silicone excipient provides different benefits. They are safe to be applied on the skin. They are non-irritizing, non-sensitizing to the skin. It is easy to formulate with silicone. Silicone excipient offer a broad range of technology, and this is really easy to formulate with them. You can achieve gel, cream, ointment, aqueous or anhydrous formulation. They can be formulated at hot and or cold process, and cold process allowing to reduce the cost in terms of manufacturing. In terms of drug delivery, you are able to add some API in the formulation and silicone allow the delivery of those drugs and you can also stabilize some drugs in silicone formulation. And silicone are really pleasant to wear. They, are, they provide non-greasy feel, non-tacky feel, they are easy to spread and they provide really the silky smooth feel of the silicone. All of those benefits allow you to achieve innovative material and to improve the patient compliance. Those benefits will be highlighted in my talk today. Um, my talk today will be really split in three parts. Within the first part, you will discover how silicone excipient can stabilize sensitive drug in formulation. The second part is really dedicated about drug delivery, and you will see how we built our expertise around this field. And the last part is really around the efficacy and the compliance, and you will see in formulation how silicone can improve key parameters on the skin. So let's start with the first part and how silicone formulation can stabilize sensitive drug. So ascorbic acid is an antioxidant and it is used also in pigmentation as depigmenting agent and it is used for hyper, hyper pigmentation skin diseases. And this active is highly sensitive to oxidation. And generally, in formulation, it is replaced 
by derivative, which is less efficient and which impact the cost of the formulation. We developed an an anhydrous glycerin in silicone formulation, and you have the composition here in the slide. The first ingredient, which is called TI6021, is a silicone emulsifier. The second ingredient is a solvent. The third ingredient, TI3021, is a silicone elastomer, and this ingredient really is added in the formulation for the consistency, for the texture of the formulation, but also for the silky smooth feel of this formulation. And the ascorbic acid is dissolved in glycerin. As mentioned previously, ascorbic acid is really sensitive to oxidation. So the first test that we are running with this formulation is to check the stability of ascorbic acid in our formulation. And you have the result on the first two bar chart. And this is after 22 days of aging at room temperature of 50 degrees C. And you can observe that after aging, we still have more than 90% of ascorbic acid remaining in the formulation. And if you are looking on the picture of the bottom, the formulation is still white. For the, two other, for the next formulation, 10% of the glycerin is replaced by water. And if you are looking at the remaining percentage of ascorbic acid, this is below 90%. And if you are looking at the picture, the formulation starts to become yellow. And for the last formulation, the complete quantity of glycerin is replaced by water. And in that case, the remaining ascorbic acid in the formulation is below 30%, and the formulation starts to become really brown, showing a huge degradation and oxidation of the ascorbic acid. So with O formulation, we were able to stabilize the ascorbic acid. We decided to compare our formulation with a commercial product, and we were really surprised by the result, because we went to a drugstore, and we bought a commercial product dedicated to hyper hyperpigmentation skin disease. And what we observed after three days of stability, the commercial benchmark show already a yellowing effect. And after 28 days at room temperature of 50 degrees C, we observe a huge degradation of the ascorbic acid compared to a formulation which is still white. As mentioned, our formulation allow the stability of the ascorbic acid. And the next step is to check if the ascorbic acid is delivered from the formulation. And we are running front cells evaluation, where we are comparing the benchmark and the formulation that we developed. And what you can observe on the pie chart, the pie chart is representing what we have in the receptor fluid and also in the three skin layer, stratum corneum, epidermis, and dermis. And you can observe that the ascorbic acid is delivered from the formulation. And we found, find the main, main part of ascorbic acid in the stratum corneum and in the epidermis. So we were able to develop a glycerin in silicone system, which allowed the stability and the delivery of the ascorbic acid. This study can be extended to other sensitive drugs to oxidation. And thanks to the presence of TI3021, which is the silicone elastomer in this presentation, which allowed to have a really nice feel and smooth feel on the skin for a formulation with a high level of glycerin. Now we will discuss about drug delivery and how we built our expertise in drug delivery. And we will discuss about uh, release testing, skin, skin penetration, and skin extraction. As you saw in the first part, we have really good skills in formulation. And we combine those skills with a huge expertise in drug delivery. To build our expertise in drug delivery, 
we are making some case study, and our case study are really divided on two main axes. The first axis is really improvement of ourselves. We are each time try to improve and to reduce the parameters which are impacting the skin delivery to optimize the way where we are making our test. And the second way is really to show you us to silicone formulation are able to deliver the drug. When we make a formulation with an API or with a drug in it, the first test that we are running is really testing. The aim of this test is really to show if the active is able to go out of the formulation or not. And for this evaluation, we are using synthetic membrane. In our case, it's often polysulfone membrane. And this is example of really testing of three emulsion loaded with lidocaine and containing three different silicone polymer. What we can observe is that the, the release, the lidocaine is released from the tree formulation and the silicone polymer doesn't impact the release. And those results are expected release. In some case, we have lower release profile and in that case, we go back to the formulation and try to improve the formulation to have a better release. If we, had, if we have good release or such kind of release, we will go one step further and we are making skin penetration and skin extraction. For those tests, we are working on piglet skin, and really the aim of this test is to show that the API can go through the skin. We are really measuring the penetration rate of the active through the skin, and at the end of the test, by tape stripping and by a heating process, we are able to separate the three skin layers, stratum cordeum, epidermis, and dermis, and we can quantify the quantity of drug in each layer. As explained when I talk, when we are making some case study for drug delivery, we are working two ways. And the first way here that I will show you is how we try to improve ourselves. And I will show you how we try to impact the reduce in the donor on skin delivery. The donor, the skin donor, has a huge impact on the delivery. As you saw on this graph on your left, it's the, resi the result of six different donors. It's the same formulation released on the different donors, and we, you saw that we have huge variability between those donors. On the two graphs on, on your right, <laughs> it's we pick only two donors and we make the average. What you observe that this we have a huge difference and the variability is big. And for us, it is quite difficult to make, to make relevant comparison between formulation with such results. So we decide to work on one skin donor and those four, four graphs show you the average of the two tests make on the same skin donor. It's four, it's four different skin donors. So we were really more confident to use only one skin donor for a comparison based on those results to have relevant comparison for our formulation. We decide to make six replicates per formulation and to use only one skin donor for our comparison. This allows us to reduce the impact of the skin donor and to have more relevant comparison when we are comparing two formulations. And the second part, the second type of case study that we are running for drug delivery is really study showing the release of active from silicone formulation. And I will show you two examples. This is comparing two formulation, two emulsion, two water in oil emulsion. The first one contains a, sil si silicone di a dimeticone, which is a polymethyl disiloxane with a viscosity of 20 centistokes versus a formulation without any silicone. What you can observe in this chart there 
is that the penetration rate of the lidocaine out of the formulation containing silicone is faster. If you are looking at the pie chart showing the repartition between the receptor fluid and the tree skin layer, we can observe that we have a little bit more of lidocaine in the dermis within the formulation without silicone. Uh, sorry. The second evaluation is it's the same formulation, but they are, the formulation are containing two different dimeticone, and dimeticone, you can have different molecular weight of dimeticone. Higher is the molecular weight, bigger, higher is the viscosity, and here we are comparing two different viscosity, so two different molecular weight. The lower one is the 20 centistokes, and the highest one is the 1,000 centistokes. What we observe is that the molecular weight of the dimeticone for such type of formulation doesn't impact the penetration rate. We have almost the same penetration rate for some, the both formulation. And if you are looking at the pie chart, the repartition within the receptor and the tree skin layer is almost the same. So to conclude about our expertise in drug delivery, our expertise is really based on case study. And I show you how we select the skin donor. We are using one skin donor really to optimize our parameter and make relevant comparison between two formulations. And generally, formulation loaded with dimeticone and active allow the delivery of those active. So we arrive at the third part of my, my speech, and here we will really talk about uh, efficacy and compliance. A lot of topical formulation contain petrolatum, and petrolatum is mainly used for its occlusivity, and occlusivity is really needed in some skin disease, such as psoriasis, for example. The drawback of using petrolatum in formulation that some cases it's difficult to spread and the formulation can be tacky. And if you look at the sensory profile on the top right, we add some silicone elastomer in petrolatum and we are running some sensory evaluation. And you can observe, if we compare with pure petrolatum, that the addition of silicone elastomer improves smoothness, spreadability, and reduces the tackiness. If you are looking at that graph here, we compare a commercial benchmark for the petrolatum and the petrolatum and the silicone blended together. The three formulations contain lidocaine, and you see that there are no impact on the penetration rate. And on the last graph, we are comparing, we are making some pain cup evaluation to measuring the occlusivity, and the presence of silicone doesn't impact the occlusivity of petrolatum. By blending some silicone within petrolatum, we improve the parameter, the skin feel parameter on the skin by keeping drug delivery and occlusivity, which is a key parameter for petrolatum. And to conclude, I show you that we offer a broad range of silicone technology that can provide you some innovation in your formulation. Formulation with silicone material combine really good drug delivery with interesting skin benefits. And as I show you, we saw skills in formulation and expertise in drug delivery. We are really a partner of choice to help you to pick the right silicone for your formulation if you are interested in a development. And I am really invite us to visit us in all eight. F60, you will discover our formulation box, which is really like a cooking box full of cards when you will discover all the formulation that we developed with the characteristic. And we have also some formulation kits. And 
It will be a pleasure for me to introduce the kit. Like this, you can feel some of the formulation which I described in my presentation. So thanks a lot for your attention.